This week we've been talking about doubly linked lists, and one of the advantages of a doubly linked list is that it's just as easy to add to the end of the data structure as it is to add to the beginning. We also compared and contrasted linked lists with arrays and talked about things that linked lists are better at and then also things that arrays are better at. And so in this lab, what you're going to be doing is you're going to be doing a bit of a experiment to see to what degree that's true. So first we're going to learn how to measure how long it takes to execute code in Java. And so we'll learn how to take a timing at the beginning of the program and then again at the end of the program so that you can see how long the program took to execute. Next, you're going to write just a little bit of code to add a whole bunch of items to the end of an array and then again to the beginning of that array and see the time difference between them. And then you're going to change out the data structure so that you instead use a linked list and add a whole bunch of items to the end of a linked list and then to the beginning of a linked list and see how long each of those four things takes. In this lab, you're not actually turning in any code. You're going to turn in a table basically saying how long it takes your program to add a bunch of items to the end of an array, the beginning of an array, the end of a linked list, and the beginning of a linked list. And then you'll answer some questions about which one was more efficient in those different scenarios. So let's go ahead and look at that. Okay, so let's walk through this just real quick. So I explained what this is going to be doing in the start of this video, what the goal is. Now let's talk about how you time a program. So there's various ways to do it, but the simplest way to do it that'll work for any setup you have is to get a time reading at the beginning of the program. So right as soon as main starts, you can call the system.nanoTime method. That returns to you a value in nanoseconds, and because nanoseconds are really small, it'll be a pretty big number. So you should store it inside of this long type variable, it would be best because it can be really big. So that gives you like a timestamp at the beginning of your program before anything else happens. Then do the same thing again at the end of your program. So put this at the very beginning, do all your stuff, and then put this at the very end. Then you'll have two values in nanoseconds, and those numbers themselves aren't really interesting. It doesn't really guarantee that it's the number of nanoseconds since any particular point in time. But what is interesting is the difference between them. So if you take this value and subtract this value from it, it'll give you the number of nanoseconds between the program starting and the program ending. So then what we can do, because nanoseconds are like really big numbers and we don't really need that much detail, you can convert it into milliseconds like this. First you do the subtraction, then you can divide by a million, which will convert it from nanoseconds into milliseconds. And then we can print that out to the screen. So that's how you can test how long the different things you're going to do for this lab are taking. So then what you'll do is you'll make a, inside of, the body of this program, basically between these two points, you'll do some experiments. The first thing you'll do is make an array list of integers and add 500,000 numbers to the end of the list. You can do that just with the add method. You can do that by having a for loop that goes from one to 500,000 and just adding like the index to the end of the list each time. Time the program and see how it takes and record that number. And for accuracy, you should do three tests and average the results because it can kind of depend somewhat on how much other stuff is running on your system. If you have a bunch of programs going, then it could take more time or less time. So just to get a good number, you could do three and average them. Next, change the program so that instead of adding to the end of the array list, you add to the beginning of the array list. You can do that by specifying with the add method that it should go at index zero. Then repeat the experiment and see how long the program takes to run now. Then do all of those things again with using the link list instead of the array list. And make sure that you're using the java.util.link list just for fairness's sake and not the link list that we developed in class together. So then do the same thing again. See how long it takes for both adding to the end and the beginning of the link list. And so then you should fill out this table here where you have all of the four different runs with the different things that were varying. The array list either at the end or the start of the data, and a link list either at the end of the start. And you can report these in milliseconds. Then answer these questions, which data structure is better for adding to the end, and which is better for adding to the start. And then are these big differences or small differences? 
So again, for this lab, you're not turning in anything but this table here and then your answers to these questions, which you can submit on Canvas. You can either like type them into a text entry form on Canvas or you can attach it as a Word document or a PDF or whatever you got. So like always, let me know if you have any questions on this lab. Thanks.